So this is a very interesting question from one of our students who is say, who asks that uh, most of the top companies typically go to top universities across the world. This is not just in India, but across the world, they typically go to top universities to hire either machine learning engineers or software engineers. But what about the next tier of colleges and universities? How do students in the next tier of colleges and universities get into these top companies? So I've worked at one of the one of the one of the really top companies in computer science or uh, in machine learning, which is Amazon.com. I've also worked at Yahoo Labs. I've gone to tons of campus placements in some of the best universities across the world. And here is my experience. First, let's let's understand it from the company's perspective because we have to understand what companies are looking for, right? And what is their viewpoint? Only then we'll be able to appreciate why they're doing what they're doing now. First of all, companies spend a lot of energy and time hiring students or hiring, hiring employees in general. So when they put in their effort, they typically want a high success rate, right? So this is because imagine, imagine if I'm, if I'm doing some hundred interviews in a year, right? I would want to make at least 20 to 30 hires because for every interview, right, at, at a top company, let's assume you have, I'll give an example from Amazon, right? You typically have anywhere from six to six to eight rounds of interviews. So at least six to eight hours of time has been spent just interviewing you. And on top of it, there will be additional time spent on writing your interview feedback, discussing your interview, trying to decide whether they should roll out an offer or not. So overall for a single candidate, they spend anywhere from 10 to 12 hours just interviewing. That's a lot of time that the company and the hiring manager and the hiring team is putting in. So when, when they're putting in so much effort, they want a high success rate. And they just look at statistics. Probably they've gone to all the top engineering colleges or top universities in the world. And they typically tend to see a higher chance of finding these people. Remember, they're also human beings. They also want to optimize their things. So imagine if they go to a top institute like Stanford or IITs or one of the top IITs, their chance of finding the 10 good students is very, very high because these universities already pre-filter some of the best students to start with. Their entrance criteria is so hard, right? Uh, either for Stanford or MIT or IITs, any of the major universities, they already pre-filter and get very hardworking fairly smart students into the into the universities to start with right so i so companies like amazon already have a very high chance high probability of finding good students and that's why they go to top universities because companies hiring managers hiring teams the hr folks want to optimize literally they want to say okay if i do if i if if one person does 100 100 interviews we want at least 20 30% success rate that's very important for them because they're putting in at least 10 to 12 hours per candidate in interviewing and writing feedbacks, all of this thing. But when they go to a smaller engineering college or a smaller university, that probability falls. Right? Probably if I go to a smaller engineering college, for every 100 interviews, probably I would get only one or two good candidates. That doesn't mean that good candidates are not there in small universities and small colleges. That's not true. There are some brilliant students in even small engineering colleges and small universities. But it's just that the probability of finding them is small as compared to a top-notch university where the probability of finding it is large. And this is not my opinion. This is statistical fact. People have done these experiments and of a lot of, lot of top companies, they go to some universities and they go for an interview. And sometimes when they don't get, uh, when they don't get good candidates consecutively for two or three years, they stop going. By the way, I have, I have been to universities where we went, top universities in the world, where we went to hire machine learning engineers for a couple of years. We didn't find good ones. We stopped going for campus interview for machine learning engineers. Right? So this is all based on statistical reality. This is all based on their prior experiences. But that doesn't mean that if you're coming from a small engineering college or a small university, your chances of getting into a top company are small. It's not. So you need to stand out. If you are coming from a small engineering college or small university, at the end of the day, what is the hiring manager looking for? He's looking for a proof of your skills, right? If you're coming from a top university, because getting into the university itself is hard and the university's curriculum is also hard. They also look at CGPA sometimes because getting a high CGPA at a top university is not easy. It requires a lot of hard work, a lot of effort, a lot of dedication 
lot of good 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 programming skills right so these all are these all are signals that the hiring manager uses to to ascertain the fact or to ascertain or to create a mental model that this student is good similarly now if you are coming from a small engineering college or a small university you need to prove to the hiring manager that you have the right skills that you have the skills just like any other student at any of the top universities and the best way for you to showcase your skills is to solve real world problems i have i have i've managed students from small engineering colleges i have interviewed them also some of them i have hired and some of them have worked brilliantly well for me these are people from no name colleges some of them okay i've never even heard their university or college name but they have shown their worth they have proven that yes they have real world skills that matter they joined our teams and they have performed brilliantly well after that there are students like that uh, sorry there are there are students and employees like that that i have personally managed or worked with very closely so just because you don't get into a top university or a top college for your undergraduate or graduate program doesn't necessarily mean that you're bad but you need to somehow prove to the hiring manager that you're good one way to prove that again look at look at applied ai course itself right the way we designed it right the way we focus on the portfolio of projects portfolio of projects is a great way to showcase your skills to the hiring manager the better the more complex the harder the more detailed projects you do the more signals you are giving to the hiring manager that yes i know machine learning these are the three projects or the five projects i have done i have the breadth of knowledge of techniques because i have done one project in deep learning uh, one project in recommender systems one project in classical machine learning one project in just data analysis that that signals to the hiring manager about all the projects you have done and when you put up your source code when you put up your ipython notebooks on your github you are showcasing to the manager that here are my programming skills this is the work that i have done please feel free to see it please evaluate me on my work not on my degree or not on my cgpa additionally when you write a detailed blog you are showcasing them your ability to communicate your ideas very clearly to others which is a very important skill by the way for most uh, for most companies it's not just good enough to be a good programmer you should be able to communicate your ideas also very clearly so a blog gives a very neat description of your work clearly explaining what problem are you solving what is the business problem you are solving what is the real world task that you are trying to achieve and how did you solve it so by writing a blog and showcasing your work on a blog which is what we try to do in the portfolio of projects is a phenomenal way to actually showcase your skills to potential employees at especially at top companies we have had some students who came from small engineering colleges who have done very very good projects and built a very very strong portfolio who got interview calls from some of the best uh, some of the best uh, companies some of the best product based companies in the world and some of them even got hired in these top notch companies right so we will help you as long as you can build extremely high quality portfolio of projects okay and again the more complex the more detailed the more hard the harder the project and the more number of projects you do the wider the breadth of projects you do the more you can showcase to the hiring manager and more original the work that you do right the more you can showcase to the interviewee or the hiring manager right or the interviewer sorry not the interviewee the more you can show to the interviewer or the hiring manager that you have the right skills it is all the hiring manager only cares about one thing if i hire this person will he perform well in my team will he excel will he solve the problem does he have the skills to solve the problem if you can showcase up front that yes i have the right skills this is the work that i have done over the last 3 months or 6 months and i can work hard i can deliver real i can solve real world problems i can deliver results the hiring manager has nothing against you he would be more than happy to hire you okay so this is one strategy to signal your skills to potential hiring managers sometimes this takes time that's okay but this is the right way to go ahead